Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm Amy Yarnell, and it is a joy to be with you this day as we worship God in the second Sunday of the Easter season. Easter is a season that is 50 days. It is the longest season of the church year because it is the most important season of the year. And so you may continue to wish your friends and family a happy Easter from now through the end of May. I want to remind you about our evening prayer gathering every night at six o'clock. We gather using Zoom and you can find the ways to access that on our website, www.wesleyumc-dover.com or on our Facebook page. We, are, we also send out that information in our email and we would love to have you join us. Uh, please note that if you are in a small group, we are restarting some of those groups or working on restarting some of those groups using Zoom. And we are also doing the same for upcoming church meetings. And so we are going to be as uh, virtually functioning as we can be during this time of quarantine. Also want to invite you to a free online course that the Upper Room is offering. It is temporarily free during this time. And it's a wonderful course on prayer and prayer practices. And it begins this week, uh, I believe Wednesday, April 22nd is the first day. And you will find details about how to register on the homepage of our website. Please also know how grateful to God I am for the generosity of our church family. We have been participating with other churches to uh, provide for Walmart gift cards to each of the families that were affected by the fire in the apartment complex near Dover High. Uh, we have also been helping to uh, support families in the Capital School District. Uh, the Capital School District was looking for extra support uh, for transportation and um, for other needs that some of the families have had in this unusual time and we have been able to respond to some of that need and also the Dover Interfaith Mission for Housing and uh, we are helping to provide additional food in this time and if you would like to help to provide a dinner one of those nights uh, they could very much use additional uh, meals dropped off or ordered in or whatever it is that you're able to do. I wanna say thank you to our youth director, Joe Young, who is continuing to have virtual youth group and virtual confirmation class. And he is also sending home lessons for all of our Sunday school kids. And finally, I wanna say a special welcome and thank you to Anthony Falkowski, our new director of Nurture Visitation and Witness. He began on Easter Monday, and I'm sorry, not on Easter Monday. He began on the Monday of Holy Week. And uh, he has been fitting right in and he has been wonderful. Uh, probably the most unusual way to start a job has been in this virtual world and he has been wonderful. And so next you will see a word from him, uh, which we recorded while he was in his office. And then we will enter into our time of silence and centering as we prepare to worship God. My name is Anthony Falkowski. I'm new to the area and new to this church. And in the same vein, I'm new as your minister of nurturing visitation and witness. I'm so looking forward to meeting with everyone. In these trying times, however, some of that's gonna to have to just be by audio, phones, possibly Zoom, and any other wonderful technical mechanisms that are available to us. And eventually, We'll meet in person. But the objective is for me to be with you, have an opportunity to let you express how you're feeling about the church and let me express how the church feels about you. And in that conversation, we'll find our way to discovering our relationship and how it can grow going forward. That's going to be my initial role. And uh, of course, I'm hoping to do a lot of other things as well. But the main thing is I'm available to all of you members of this church. But, uh, and with gratitude, I'm looking forward to the day when we can all meet in person with some of this stuff that's going on right now, all behind us. And we'll be healed. We'll be closer. We'll love each other more, we'll have a better world. At least we'll pray for all those things to come about. So thank you. Once again, 
have a wonderful, wonderful Easter because he has risen. So we do not lose heart even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure because we look at not what can be seen but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Impossible God, you make all things possible. You make all things new. You called for the light when your spirit hovered over the waters and there was light. You breathed into dirt and brought forth humanity. You raised Christ from the tomb. You continue to bring forth life out of death. You raise flowers from the earth after the cold winter. We know you will bring forth life again. And this time, may we deepen our trust in you. May we strengthen our faith in humanity that love can overcome fear and hate. May we broaden our understanding of love to all who are in need. May we rise again this time with lessons learned and strive to build a better society of kindness and caring. May we remember those who are risking their lives to save lives and those who are keeping our society running and making it possible to have food and vital services. May we do our part to ensure their health and safety now in the time to come by working for justice for all, for living wages for all, for health for all. Impossible God, may we learn that nothing is impossible with you. We can change the world because of you. We can love one another without hate because of you. We can become a new creation because of you. Remind us, teach us, and guide us. Amen. Guiding God, send your Holy Spirit upon the reading of your word that it may serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Amen. Please rise and body your spirit for today's gospel lesson, which comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, uh, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To live as Easter people is to live knowing that death is not the final word. 
What if we lived in the full and certain knowledge that the worst thing is never the last thing? What would we do differently if we really believed that we were loved beyond all endings, that there was nothing to fear? Today, we imagine Jesus at our right hand, counseling us throughout our days, peace be with you. Many of us have personally known folks who have had near-death experiences, who go on to describe the amazing light and peace that they glimpsed. I often think of Debbie, a woman in the last church I served who died of pancreatic cancer. She was terminal by the time they figured out what it was that was wrong with her. And in that year of her going through treatment and us praying fervently for her, she displayed such amazing peace throughout it all. I remember sitting by her bedside a few days before she died. She was at peace, waiting for the end to come. And I realized that she was about to go where I longed to be. She was going home to see Jesus. I felt something of longing and of envy that she was getting to go. I witnessed something similar when Carolyn Apple in our own church family was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She bore witness to how faith indeed leads to peace that passes all understanding. And she had what Christians in other centuries would have called a good death. She was at peace and she was ready, even if we were not ready to let her go. One of the great promises of the resurrection is that Jesus has overcome sin and death. The grave cannot hold him. And because he lives, we live. We are promised that death is not the final word. There is no grave deep enough, no misery imposing enough, no stone heavy enough, no evil strong enough to keep Christ in the grave. The worst thing is never the last thing. We claim this promise in the ways that we practice prayer. This is how we make the promise our own. Spending time in prayer and contemplation and meditation, however we want to name it, is to spend time focusing upon how it feels to rest in God's presence and to trust in God's love. I'm here to tell you this is not easy. It may be simple or even straightforward, but it is also not fast. It is something that happens slowly, steadily, over time, and with regular practice. And that is why spending time in silence and contemplation is so vitally important. It is how we recognize the movement of the spirit and how we learn to see it for what it is. It's how we recognize and feel the presence of God in our midst. In my Wednesday evening group, we spend 15 to 20 minutes of our hour together every time in silence. And the spirit moves among us as we are gathered in silence in ways that are different than when I am in silence by myself. We sit and we reflect and we listen and we hear God speaking into our lives in very subtle but very powerful ways. This is the path of peace that passes all understanding. This is the peace that we are offered in Jesus. The prayer practice, which I have found especially fruitful, is the practice of visualization, either by visualizing an encounter with Jesus or by entering into a story in scripture and visualizing how it unfolds and speaks to me. This always begins in silence. And then if I am visualizing, encountering Jesus, I picture the setting, and then I see myself entering the space where Jesus is. Over the years, I have felt led to picture myself in all kinds of ways. My most common one is walking on a beach with Jesus. Sometimes I'm walking, sometimes I'm crawling to Jesus, sometimes I'm crying. Often I end up feeling held by Jesus. I simply follow the images wherever they lead me and pour out my heart to him with whatever I need to share. In this pandemic, we are being confronted by death in ways that we are usually able to avoid thinking about. What if you took the time to both face your mortality and embrace God's promises? 
The more honestly we engage the realities of death, the more confident we become in claiming God's promises that Jesus has defeated death. It is in facing something in courage and faith that we experience God's presence and power in the midst of it. So cry when you feel like crying. Imagine whatever fears you need to imagine. And then offer all of those feelings and worries and fears into the arms of Jesus and ask him to carry you in the strength of the spirit. Lean in to God's presence as you seek God's spirit. If at first all you find is anxiety and fear, know that that's normal, that's human, and that's okay. The more time you spend facing these feelings, the more God is able to work in and through them to enable you to experience Christ's peace and promise. Sometimes I think of this as a kind of spiritual weightlifting. First, imagining some difficult circumstance, then asking me myself and God, would I be able to trust you even through that? Would I trust your presence even in those circumstances? I do a prayer visualization of walking through that circumstance with Jesus and picture what it might look like. In a locked room 2,000 years ago, Jesus appeared to the disciples to show his nail marks. He even came back so that Thomas could have the same opportunity to have that experience. And we are offered a similar opportunity in our prayer and relationship with Jesus to see the risen one and to put our whole trust in his grace. We are not promised there will be no pain in this life. We aren't promised there will be no suffering. We are promised that the worst thing is never the last thing. Thanks be to God. Amen. Resurrecting God in a doubting world, keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for the church universal. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that we may honor and pass on the great inheritance we have received. We pray for the whole world, its nations, its leaders, and its people, that your wisdom and peace may prevail. We pray for all those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and those who care for them. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Keep us in faith that we may have life. Blessed are you, O God, who through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and in the community of the Holy Spirit, gives us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, now and forever, as we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to the offering in which we respond to the grace of God in our lives by giving to God from all that God has given to us. There are several ways that you can make a financial contribution to the life of the church. Uh, one would be to mail a check to Wesley United Methodist Church, which you can find on our, uh, or you can mail a check to uh, 209 South State Street, Dover, Delaware, 19901. You can also go to our website, wesleyumc-dover.com and click on giving. Or you can send a text to 77977 and uh, use the words WUMC and then app in order to receive a link to download the app. And now I want to take a moment and I want to uh, share with you a word of thanks about our co-lay leaders, uh, Larry and Donna Josephowski, our associate lay leader, Jim Thistlewood, and his wife, Sandy. Together, they are at the core of leading within the life of Wesley United Methodist Church. They literally have a role in every aspect of leadership within the church. And especially during this unusual time of the pandemic, they have been giving of themselves sacrificially and deeply 
uh, bearing witness to what it looks like to give of our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Uh, together, they uh, make up the core of how we partner together in order to lead the church with all of the faithful servants who helped to make that happen. And I just wanted to take a moment this morning to say how grateful to God I am for their leadership. Thank you. Generous God, you are our portion and our cup. In you our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges that they may bring joy of your presence more deeply into the world. Amen. now receive these words of benediction. Go forth in peace. Remember that we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. And so be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. May the grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and empower you this day and always. Amen. Amen.